What's up guys, it's Project, and today I'm bringing you my final tip video for Neo 2. Now these tips are for the final difficulty, Dream of the Neo, and the Underworld from the final DLC, The First Samurai. For anything before that, uh, good luck. They removed a lot of the good options we had at getting gear, so it's literally all up to luck if you can put together builds prior to Dream of the Neo. I would say a grapple build with Tyra is the easiest chance at a solid build without driving you too crazy. This tip is aimed at the upcoming PC crowd that's going to get the game in February. So go Tyra, focus on key damage and anima gen using Gozuki or Epon, and you should do well enough. And now for the actual tips. Pretty well known now, but just in case, Underworld has loot tables for graces. There are three separate ones and you can only get graces within that loot table dependent on the floor number. Here are the tables with all the floors that correspond to the drops for each, to save you guys on the math. Hopefully I didn't screw anything up, but essentially, you take the floor number, you divide it by 3, and whatever the number's decimals are, is the loot table it belongs to. So this is how you can farm the new graces as early as possible. Old divine graces are still RNG, but you should have enough of them by now from the DLCs prior. I recommend doing this as soon as you unlock Dream of the Neo rather than Dream of the Neo itself. Dream of the Neo has limited usage for players honestly, which was a mistake by Team Ninja in my opinion, giving you access to the Underworld immediately instead of after beating Dream of the Neo, but it's whatever, too late. The only thing worthy in Dream of the Neo is farming some boss cores faster like Nightmarebringer, or save scumming the Yasukani before Atakamaro in the Eye of the Beholder mission in Afterglow. Essentially, you pray at the shrine before the boss, you upload your save to PlayStation Cloud, you beat a Takamaro, get the guaranteed one-time ethereal Yasukani from mission rewards, and if you don't get the grace or stats you want, then re-download your old save from Cloud, and you'll reset at the shrine again. And you repeat that until you get, you know, your stuff. But now that accessories can roll minus one set bonuses as well, it's kind of a waste of time for the most part. The second tip is plus level. I get asked a lot how to get plus 99 gear project, and the answer is... Patched. Before 1.21, damn scrolls drop plus 97 gear automatically. Now, they don't, and you're left with having to upgrade the plus value from the guy before the boat in the underworld to get to plus 97 drops. I recommend only pumping that first before ethereal drop rate, which apparently doesn't really have a big impact anyhow. But of course, the problem is getting lapis. Well, there is a method for speed farming lapis. However, you need access to this certain stage, one at 47 and one at 108. There might be more in between or before, but these are the floors I know. The 108 drops three lapis per drop, but 47 drops two lapis per drop, which is still decent. For this method, you're gonna wanna stack luck and item drop rate, pool Ibisu is your best bet, and upgrade your rifle as high as you can. Equip a scroll with ethereal drop rate up, and if you really care, put luck on all your pieces and a Sudama helm. Also, make sure to increase your drop rate with Ochoco Cups before starting the Underworld stage. What makes this layout special is there's two dweebs talking about anime in the corner. Equip Luckbringer and Earth Folding Talisman and you line up your shot with a rifle, headshotting both at the same time. Take that, weebs. Again, if your gun is high enough level, you'll one-shot them. They'll usually drop one or two ethereals each time, which can be Lapis majority of the time. They also sometimes drop Roaring Gun Ammo to fuel your onslaught. How nice of them. So you simply repeat this till you get enough lapis to, well at the very least, progress Underworld a bit faster, and once you reach floor 108, you can then get 3 lapis per double kill, speeding up your progress to plus 97. And that is the fastest method I know of getting lapis. Now there is a chance for you to get this stage layout in the depths as well, and if so, then you'll have a chance to get damn scrolls for them too. So each day, check the depths in hope of getting this layout. Speaking of depths though, it's the only way to get damn scrolls without co-op. The bad part is you need to beat all 108 floors to unlock it, kind of a dumb move in my opinion from Team Ninja. The drop rate for scrolls is also really rare here, however, you can do the save quit method after beating the boss and not getting a scroll. You'll be back at the shrine on return and you repeat that till you get a scroll from the boss. This is faster than going through each level for scrolls, but it's still kind of hard to get one. And you won't be stocking up Lapis by running all 5 depths fast, so eh, just use cat sneaking scrolls and stuff to get to each boss. With that said though, co-op is the best way to get damn scrolls and should be the only method you try to do. Especially lucky drop ones that skew their drops towards a specific race. 
Of course, this is dependent on the health of the online, which is why I mentioned the earlier save quit method. But searching for a room from Expedition brings up potential scrolls. The main thing you're looking out for is Lucky Drop Grace. But this Yomi plus a Take one with Amrita bonus is also a common one people spam that has ultimate magic and courage main stat on the scroll. But the Lucky Drop ones are the ones you're focusing on to farm the gear, not the scroll. So pick one, hope you get in, and then farm the scroll together till you can get one as a reward from the reward screen, which will be the same scroll you've just done, albeit the drop rate is not high either. Optimally, try to get double boss scrolls mostly. The ones that have trash mobs are not good for farming, but once you do get a scroll, it's time to head to solo. Again, the easier the first boss, the easier the farming method, as you'll need to strip down, get naked, to really min-max your odds. Also, make sure the boss is yokai as well, as humans will skew their drops towards their drop sets rather than random gear. But essentially, gear will drop with the grace at an increased rate if it is not a normal set bonus gear. If you have lucky drop armor or weapon tempered on charm, then your equipped gear will drop more commonly, allowing you to get more specialized gear with the grace you want. So say you want Tengu Helm with Izanagi Grace. Equip Tengu Helm, fight an Izanagi scroll, and eventually you'll get a handful of masks to choose from with that grace, so long as you have lucky drop armor. The same goes for accessories and weapons. Need a Susano accessory? Well, put Lucky Drop Accessory on Accessory and farm a Susa Scroll. You basically beat the first boss and then Earth Folding back. On Ryoki, Owl and Yuki ones are the easiest. For weapons, I recommend doing one weapon at a time. Regardless of the rarity equipped, you can still get an ethereal version even if it's in your offhand. So you can forge a more specialized weapon with the mains that you want, say Purity, to have increased drop rate for it. Last recommendation is using a scroll with ethereal drop rate up. It really helps a lot, and Path of Ruthless is great as well to speed up farming with the 30% damage increase. And from the hours that you'll probably have to do this method, you're going to farm a ton of Amrita to level up as well. But if you want easier builds, the new plus sets from Dream of the Neo are the way to go. Example, instead of Susano, you could rock Warrior of the West, which gives you versatility in addition to 15% damage against electric, 4% melee, and an additional 7% to the front of enemies, making it the best damage set against humans in the game. To activate those plus set bonuses, however, you need to wear the same amount of plus pieces to activate it. So, in Warrior of the West's case, 7 plus pieces. You cannot mix and match between normal and plus, however, you can easily make a non-plus set plus by soul matching it with the same kind. And using something like Lucky Drop Equipped Armor as mentioned earlier, you can get set bonus pieces fairly quickly. So while some of the better drops are mostly graces, for a starter build in Underworld or Dream of the Neo, plus sets will carry you to that post-game Underworld where you can then farm graces via damn scrolls. But until then, go plus sets for sure. And that's it, hopefully these few tips will make things more easier for you. This is how I've been making my builds. With that said though, Endgame is still a grind, which speaking of, after reaching level 750, there's an additional thousand focus levels to get, costing 3 billion Amrita a pop. These have no soft or hard caps, so 500 life is the max, 200 attack is the max, and 100 recovery and luck is the max if you pump solely those stats alone. You cannot change the stats either after you get them, so be careful which ones you pump up. Personally, without the 999 floors of Abyss, I find it hard to care for that many more levels past 750 for minor upgrades in an already easier game than Neo 1. I mean, no double boss battles for the end game? Why? Uh, well, whatever. Neo 2 is the last Neo 2 game confirmed by the developers. Hopefully whatever their next game is takes what Neo did right and expands on that. But considering how they handled stuff twice with Neo, my faith in them for an RPG is shaky. But you know, they could just make Ninja Gaiden and drop the RNG junk, I guess. But that's the video. I'll leave a link to some resources like the new sets and stuff in the video description. If you're brand new to the series, watch my Giga Tips video, which will sure to help those coming in from the PC version next February in the end screen annotation. The next build is Futsunushi Sword, which will be my final build for this series. Perhaps. I'll try to get that one on New Year's. Check out my Madara build or Maelstrom build as well. The latter more friendly for the start of Underworld, the former, more min-max for post-Underworld. And that's all the plugs I got. If you guys enjoyed and found the video helpful, 
EI that like button. If you got any more tips to share to help players, comment them down below. And last but not least, subscribe for more Neo 2 New Year epicness. Don't wait.